Hey everybody, I am John Barker, and in this episode of Here to Record Show and Tell, I'm going to show you 12 different ways that you can control your ATEM switcher. And I do want to mention that this video is not sponsored by any of these products or services that are mentioned. They're just different ways of controlling your ATEM. So let's get going. Number one, the ATEM software control. So this is where it all starts. You probably use this and it might even be the first place that you use to control your ATEM. It's a really nice piece of software. Of course, it has all the options in there for the ATEM control, but you will find yourself clicking around a lot and it's certainly not something you can use without looking at it. There's also options mapped to your keyboard, of course, like the number buttons and the space bar, but you will find yourself coming back in here and clicking around if you want to make adjustments or if you want to turn on some special things. Number two, hardware buttons on the ATEM. All of the current ATEM models actually have buttons on them somewhere, and uh, certainly even the new 8K version as well, it has buttons on the front. But while these are useful to use and set up, I just don't think it's somewhere where you're actually going to make the switch. Um, if you have the TVS HD, if you have the Pro version though, and it's sitting on your desk, then you'll certainly use those buttons. Number three, phone and tablet apps. I've used Strata for the iPhone and iPad before, and I've made videos about it too. And you can definitely use these because they're well built and work well with all the ATEM models. But I do find that you can't really use them without looking down at the phone. Without those tactile buttons, these ways of controlling the ATEMs, I find, are kind of getting in the way instead of just being very intuitive. And you have to look at the device itself to make sure you're tapping the right place. Number four, phone and tablet DIY apps. These are a little bit different than the previous ones where you can use a more customizable solution like Touch OSC, something I have made a video about in the past as well. And it lets you just build a sort of dashboard or controller the way you like it. And while that customization is really great, you will need to look down at the device because you don't know where on your tablet or your phone you're pressing. So that's another downside of these kind of app solutions. Number five, MIDI control. There's a bunch of different ways alone just to get MIDI to work with your ATEM. In my personal experience, I really like OSC Elator or Oscillator and ATEM OSC. These are really nicely worked together and you can set up um, just about any MIDI controller to talk right to your ATEM. Number six, MIDI with the ATEM software control. The ATEM software control does have Mackie support built right in, so you can just plug in your device, set it into that mode, and it will actually control things. Another video has been made about that and you can check it out here, but I would say that you should probably avoid this um, unless they really work on the current implementation. I find it to be very buggy and it works really weird and I have heard from other people that have had the same experience. Companion and the Stream Deck. My current way of controlling the ATEM is with Companion and a Stream Deck. So Companion lets you talk to a bunch of your broadcast gear and it connects well with the Stream Deck and everything just works nicely. So that's really something I recommend to a lot of people. It's also really flexible. You can really set it up the way you want it to be and there's this massive community behind it which is really pushing the project forward and it's just getting better and better. Number eight, H2R buttons. I've also made my own software in beta called H2R buttons, which lets you use a few devices to control your ATEM switcher and your HyperDeck. Since I've been using Companion so much, it's kind of taken a back seat, but if you want to check it out, give it a download and uh, let me know if there's any improvements you want to see in there. Number nine, DIY Arduino controller. Now this one is not for everyone and it's even something I failed to finish. I set out to build my own Arduino based control panel and I got quite far. You can see here the progress I made or I could press the buttons and it actually worked, but I find that my skills just weren't strong enough. But maybe if you're super into Arduino and that kind of infrastructure, then you can grab Scarhoy's open source library or a few other things that are available and uh, build your own controller with an Arduino. Number 10, Scarhoy. While we're talking about Scarhoy, I have taken a look at their panels in the past and what I really like about them is they're customizable, each button can be set to something different and they have so many different options in terms of a small controller or a big controller or whatever one you want. Now when you compare that to the Stream Deck or a MIDI controller, the price is very different. But I think if you buy one, you'll be super happy with what you get. 11. X Keys. X Keys have a bunch of different devices that you can use to control your ATEM. Now this is a little more DIY as well, so you will need to step in and, and do some manual configuration. But you can use things like Just Macros or even Controller Mate to set up each button and let that control your ATEM. And number 12, the official Blackmagic Design hardware panels. And of course you can spend some money and go straight to Blackmagic Design and get an ATEM 1ME or ATEM 2ME panel to control your ATEM. Now I know there's plenty of small, medium and large companies that have invested a lot of money in these panels and there is no doubt that they're well built, they are built for the exact purpose and they will make you very happy if you buy one. 
it just comes with a huge price tag. So you need to know if you want to buy it and I'll leave that up to you. So those are my 12 ways to control the ATEM. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure, sure, sure that I missed a bunch of other ways. So do let me know in the comments below. And also let me know which one of these you use to control your ATEM. I would love to know how people have progressed. For me, I started with the software control, moved to MIDI pretty soon, and I also used the Touch OSC, and then I used the Stream Deck and a few other things along the way. So I've used most of these that I've mentioned, and I want to hear what you use as well.